Good afternoon or good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Indus Software Web Studio webinar, Stump the Expert. My name is Fabio Teresino, and I'll be hosting this webinar. Uh, this is a very open format. Uh, you are free to write whatever questions you want and send your questions to us, and uh, we'll do our best to address your questions and provide the information you need. Uh, you can use the webinar, uh, the WebEx toolbar at the top of your monitor to write your questions on the chat box or in the Q&A box, which is available on the WebEx toolbar at the top of your monitor. Uh, this webinar should take uh, around one hour, could be a little bit less or a little bit more depending on the number of questions. Uh, but again, if you have any requirements, any questions, feel free to write them down, and I'll be more than happy to address them. So let's see, we have uh, one question already, which is uh, how, do, how to realize communication between uh, database and in the software studio. So uh, in the software studio, we have an interface to exchange data with any SQL relational database, anything from Excel to Access, Sybase, SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, uh, through standard technologies like ODBC, OLEDB, ADO, and ADO.net. Uh, the good news is Indosoft makes it very simple for you to save and retrieve data from any one of those databases. So just to make a, a quick example here, uh, I'm going to use Microsoft SQL Server, but it could be any database. I'm going to create a new database here. Let's call Afternoon Webinar, for example. So it is a blank database. If I refresh refresh here, a blank database, there are no tables, no nothing. If I want to save data, let's say history data into this database, I can create a new project, for instance, afternoon webinar. <clears throat> okay, and here under project options, I can create a link to that particular database. If you use Excel or uh, MDB files from Access, you can use the JAS provider. If you use Oracle, you can use this Oracle provider. In our case, we are going to use Microsoft SQL Server, so I will select the SQL Server provider. Here, I define the connection settings with the database. In this case, it's a local SQL Express using Windows authentication, and I can select here the afternoon webinar test connection succeeded. Very well. Now, if I want to save history data into this database, I can go to Tasks, Trains, right-click to insert a new trained worksheet, define the tags I want to save there, like ABC, and how often I want to save. In this case, every second. And I say I want to save to the database. That's pretty much it. Now on this screen, I'll create a screen here where uh, I can have, let's say, some sliders to modify the values for the tags A, B, and C, so I can simulate them on the fly. A, B, one more, this one would be C, very well. And if I want to display this data in a trend control, I just create the trend control this on the screen. And here in points, defines the three points for the tags A, B, and C with different colors, like blue, red, and green, for example. Save it, save the main screen, and run it. We can change here values for the tags A, B, and C. And if I go to the SQL Server database and refresh this database, you see that Indusoft created the table train 001. 
And if I select the value from this table, I see the values here for the tags A, B, and C recorded every second. It's that simple to save data into the database, and the trend control automatically retrieves the data and shows the history data on the screen. Even if you want to display this data as a table, you could use from this table or from any other table, you could use the grid control, define here the colors for the grid control for the cells. In data search, define database. Here in data search settings, select the table you want to retrieve data from. Does not have to be a table uh, created by Indosoft. And here in columns, you define, uh, for instance, the label time in the column timestamp, for example, and the tags A, B, and C as numeric values. Very well. Save it. And Indosoft retrieves the data from the table and shows the data here. And then you can filter the data, you can manipulate in any way and fashion you want. But the specific question is how to interact with the database for uh, using VB scripts. So probably want to manipulate the data outside the, the graphical interface. In Indosoft, we have built-in functions to uh, interact with the database from any station, even from the thin clients. So here in tasks, you have database ERP. You can right click here in connection and create a new connection. And it's very important to define an alias for this connection, a name here. For instance, DB, could be any name you want. Here in the connection string, you build the connection string for your database again. In this case is the local SQL Express database. I will link to the same database here, afternoon webinar. Very well. And now from Indosoft, there are uh, different tools I can use to interact with this database. Uh, one of the main functions is a built-in function from Indosoft called DB Execute. In this function, the first argument is the name of the connection that we created here under tasks database connections, in our case DB. And the second one is the SQL statement you want to execute. For example, to make a better code, I'm going to create a variable called SQL, could be any name, and I'm going to set to this variable the command create table test with the columns uh, C1 integer and C2 in var char with up to 1024 characters. So this is the SQL statement to create one table called test with two columns, C1, which is integer, and C2, which is an alphanumerical uh, column with up to 1024 characters. I'm going to change the caption here to create table, and to troubleshoot here in the output window, I can go to settings and enable here database messages. So if there is any error in my SQL statement, it will show the error message there. So I click on the button, no error messages is a good sign. If I refresh here the afternoon webinar database, I have my table test with the columns C1 and C2. Now, if I query data from this table, so select everything from test, it is pretty much empty. I just created the, the table. Now, if I want to insert data into this table, I use exactly the same function db execute. I just change the command. So the SQL command would be something like insert into uh, test values, for instance, 1 and ABC, for example. Execute. I'll change the label here to insert, save. So if I click here, insert, no errors here. 
if I select again, I have the values 1 and ABC in this table. And obviously, you can build those SQL statements uh, combining tags and, and values, whatever it is. For instance, I can create here an ID for ID equals to 1 to 10. I want to do a loop. Oops, sorry. A loop and insert 10 rows, but the first value is going to be, I'm going to concatenate here the value of the variable ID, and for the value, for, for the second value, I'm going to concatenate the tag time, for example. So save it. Click here, no errors there. If I select again from the database, oops, there's a typo here. If I select again from the database, I have 10 additional rows with the value of the tag time. They were all inserted within the same second in the values of the variable uh, ID, 1 to 10. So you can use the DB execute function to execute any SQL relational database. Create table, create database, uh, drop table, drop database, insert values, update values, delete values, and so on and so forth. So the DB execute function is a very powerful and easy to use function. When you want to query data, select data, read data from the database, then there is an another set of functions that you can use, also built-in functions from Indosoft. So I'm going to change here the label of this button to query. And I'm going to create a simple script here that will query all data from this table, from the table query, and show a message box uh, with uh, all the values from this table. So I'm going to create some variables Nuncur will be a handle for the data set that I read from the, uh, from the uh, database using my query. SQL, SQL will be the variable where I write my query. Num rows is the number of rows returned by the query. Row will be just an index. And TXT is the value I want to show in the, text, uh, in the message box. So far, those are just variable names, could be any names that you do not have to necessarily use those names. So the first thing is to define the SQL statement. In this case, I'm going to read everything from the table test. Could be any other valid select statement. It could be even executing a store procedure. And then I create this syntax here, the DB cursor open SQL. The first argument is the name of the connection that we created, and the second one is the SQL statement. So using this DB connection, we are going to execute this select statement and return a number, which is a handle uh, for the data set created in, in memory with all the values, all the rows and fields from this query. It's very important to call the DB cursor close for this handle after you are done with the memory. If you keep uh, querying data, calling the open, and not close each one of them, you will create a memory leaking, and eventually your system will fault for lack of memory. So use the DB cursor open SQL to uh, query the data, read the data. After you are done manipulating the data, make sure you call the DB cursor close to destroy this information from memory, to, to release the memory again uh, before when you are done with the data. So in new rows, I'm going to use the function db cursor row count using the handle as the reference. So it's going to return how many rows these SQL statements uh, retrieved. It's up to 16,000 in, in the built-in functions. So for row equals to one to new rows, I'm going to have a loop here. I'm going to get to the variable uh, txt, 
is equal to txt, whatever value it had before, and this function, db cursor get value, allows you to retrieve a value from a particular uh, column in the database. So in this case, I have C1 and C2. So I'm going to return the value of C1. And then I'm going to concatenate, for instance, a tab character. And call the same function but to retrieve the value from the column C2. And then I go to the next row, concatenate the care return line feed character to, to go to the next row in the uh, TXT variable. And to go to the next record in the database, I call the function db cursor next for this data set. And this is pretty much done. So just reviewing, you are selecting, uh, calling this function with this SQL statement to select the data, to query the data from the database, and store it in memory. This variable receives the, let's say, the address of the memory where this data set is. Use the function the cursor row count to find out how many records were retrieved, and then I uh, have a loop retrieving the data from each one of those columns and concatenating into the variable txt. Uh, in each interaction of this loop, I use the function db cursor next to go to the next record in the data set. And when I'm done with the, the data, I just call the db cursor close to release this, uh, this data set from memory. And finally, I can message box the value of txt. So I save here, click on the button, and I have one ABC, one this time, two this time, all the data from the database. So this is a basic overview, uh, but pretty much with the function db execute and this set of functions here. db cursor open SQL, db cursor row count, db cursor get value, db cursor next, and db cursor close you can do pretty much any kind of transactions uh, with an external database from Indosoft Web Studio. And it works from the server and from any thin clients uh, where you configure those scripts. So another question, uh, how can I mark on graphs or database or proprietary file situation, uh, situation that the tag quality is bad? Uh, very good question. In here, in the trained interface, uh, you have this uh, under each trained worksheet. Uh, if you go to advanced, you have this uh, option here, bad quality. And you have a few options to indicate that the quality is bad. So what to do when the quality is bad? Uh, by default, we, uh, we just save the tag value, so there is no indication there. Uh, you can define here a maxim maximum value. So when there is a, a bad quality, you write into the database the value set into the max property for the tag or the minimum possible value for the tag or you can write in the database uh, a special code that means uh, value not uh, uh, available. Or you can write any particular value here uh, into the database. For instance, I want to, every time that the quality is bad, I want to write 9999 or whatever it is. So using this interface here, you can actually write different values uh, into the database when the quality is bad. Uh, and then when you retrieve this data within the soft, uh, you can filter the data and make sure you either show with different colors or, or filter out the data with bad quality. Good question. So another question is, can I create a two-dimensional tags within the soft? 
right now in Indosoft, in any VB script interface, you can create variables, and those variables, like variable ABC, can have one or two or three or several di dimensions, not only uh, one, but two, but three, but, but four different dimensions, and you can manipulate those multidimensional arrays uh, in your script as VB script variables. The Indosoft tags uh, so far are arrays of one dimension. Uh, upcoming versions of Indosoft that will be available soon uh, will allow you to have multidimensional arrays in nested classes as well. In the current version, you can have multidimensional variables in your scripts interface and one-dimensional arrays uh, in your tag database as well as classes. Any other question? Uh, can you create a graphic that is transparent or that you can uh, partially see through such as text box or bitmap? Uh, an opaque city. Uh, well, uh, the, the question is about graphic. I think it's controls in general. Uh, this particular graphic here, the, the trend control, you can set the background color to no fill. So if I have anything behind it, like let's say this object behind it, you can see, let's save, okay. You can see the object behind it behind the curves. So if the question was particularly for the trend control, uh, yes, it's possible to do that. And for anything else you have here in graphics, this option condition. And in condition, you can have here uh, a fixed value, like one, for example, or an expression like tag A. And in the current version, uh, you can show or hide this object based on this condition. Uh, in the next version that will be released uh, within, uh, we expect, one or two months, uh, this field will be a little bit different. If the value of this expression is zero, we'll keep hiding the object. If the value of this control, uh, uh, if the value of this expression is one or greater than one or uh, less than zero, we'll show the object with 0% uh, of transparency. But if the result of this expression is any value from zero to one, this value indicates the level of uh, uh, visibility for the value, for the object. For example, if I say here 0.5, it means 50% of transparency. If I have 0 0.8, it will mean 20% uh, of transparency. 80% of the, the filling of the object will be visible. So in the next version for Indosoft Hub Studio, in the next Hub Spec actually, which should be released within uh, one or two months, uh, these fields, we, we changed the label of this property uh, to visibility slash transparency, and you'll be able to define a level of transparency for any shape, uh, pretty much any picture, any object in the software studio. Very well. Sure, welcome. Uh, there are a few other questions here. Let's see. Uh, there are some questions that uh, pretty much about, well, at least one question about ActiveX controls, how to integrate ActiveX controls to the Software Studio and manipulate them. Uh, here in the Software Studio, in any graphical interface, you have this uh, ActiveX control interface. I'm going to save this screen and create a new one. Very well, and I can click, click here in ActiveX controls, 
and it shows me the list of all ActiveX controls installed in my computer, available in my computer. I can pick any one of them, like for instance this Microsoft Web Browser. Let me change the background color here so we can see exactly where the control is. And Indosoft Web Studio is a generic ActiveX container. It means uh, you can access interfaces from the ActiveX control, properties, methods, or events. So if I double click on this control, uh, you can assign a name for the control. And if you click here in configuration, you can link tags to the properties of the ActiveX control. You can also configure t tags to trigger the execution of methods whenever those tags change of values. And you can write scripts that will be executed whenever any particular event uh, is called by this ActiveX control. Another way to interface with ActiveX controls is through VB script in the software studio. So you can give a name, a alias for the ActiveX control for instance, in B, my browser. And here in graphics, you can type the name you gave to the ActiveX control, dot, and then using IntelliSense, we show all the properties and methods from the control. You can pick a particular property or method, in this case, the method navigate to, and define, the, uh, in this case, the property URL from the uh, from the method navigate to to google.com. So I can save it, run it, click on the button, and we have the Google website hosted here within uh, the Windows Software Studio application. So it's that simple to interact with any ActiveX control. Another question is how do I see in the IntelliSense the VB script variables available in my program? Uh, for instance, if I create here verb dim uh, x, for example. And in this case, it's a very small script, but if it was a large script, you might want to, uh, let's create a variable with a larger name, like uh, level of the thing. A, B, C. So if it was a large script, it could be hard to remember the name of the variable, or you simply might not want to have to type the name of this variable again to avoid mistakes. So if you click Control Space near the B script interface, we showed in the IntelliSense, and as you type it, we automatically select uh, the functions or tags or properties or variables that are available in this context. So I can just get here level of the 10 KBC, and I don't have to type this all again. So I can make this variable equal to 10, for example. So in any DB script interface, if you press Control Space, uh, it will show you the list of VB script variables as well as functions and tags that are available in that context. Uh, <clears throat> is it possible to create a template to manage a driver communication? For example, I have a few types of machines, A, B, C, and D, and I know physical addresses of the PLCs, but I don't know which one will be used. Uh, operator at the first run will choose the configuration A, B, C, D, whatever it is. Uh, yes, the, if, I under, if I understood the question, uh, it's very uh, possible and easy to do that within the software studio because there is what we call a layer of abstraction between the tags and the drivers. So in most HMI SCADA systems, when you create the tags, you link the tags directly to a particular address in your PLC. In Indosoft, you create the tags here, like the tags ABC in the tags database or from the graphics script or, for, or, or from the graphical interface, the scripts from anywhere. You have the tags. 
And then here in communication, you can add drivers or OPC uh, client worksheets, like for instance, let's say the multi-CP driver. And here in the drivers, you link tags from Indosoft, like A, B, C, to particular addresses from the PLCs, for instance, holding register one, two, and three. And here in the station, let's say the IP address 1.1.1.1.1.1, 5021, so just a placeholder here. So here in this driver worksheet, I linked the tags A, B, C, and D to the uh, to those addresses from a Schneider PLC, from from a PLC that talks Modbus at least. I can add another driver here. Let's say the uh, A, B, C, I, P for 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 example for uh, control logic. And in this driver, I can have exactly the same tags, A, B, and C, but in this case, assigned to different addresses, like for instance, to the PLC tag level and pressure and temperature. So the same tags are assigned to those two different drivers. And I can keep going. I can add a driver to uh, the Omron PLC. I can add a driver to the uh, Beckoff PLC, to the Siemens PLC, to whatever PLCs uh, you have in your system. Now, the trick is uh, it does not make sense during the runtime to read values from two different PLCs to the same tags. So you can use here the disable field like for instance, uh, PLC type. Let's create the tag PLC type. And you can write any kind of expressions here. Like for instance, for the Contralogix PLC, you will disable this worksheet unless the PLC type is different from one. In the multi-CP, you will disable the PLC type whenever it is different from zero, and so on and so forth. So if the PLC type is zero, only the Modbus driver will be enabled, and the, and the other drivers will be disabled. If the PLC type is one, the Contralogix driver will be enabled, and the other drivers will be disabled. So I can create the configuration for two, three, as many drivers as I want, and during the runtime, just by changing the value of one tag, I can point, uh, I can decide which driver should be communicating and which drivers would be dormant. Uh, one last tip here is uh, many times the station, the IP address of the PLC, is variable as well. So you can have another tag in this field, like PLC station, a string tag, and by changing the value of this tag during the runtime, you pretty much uh, set a different station for those tags on the fly. So it's useful not only uh, when you have to assign the, the PLC address to the tags during the runtime, but also when you have redundant PLCs. So you can set the PLC station to the IP address of the primary PLC, and if you realize that you are having communication errors, uh, for instance, using the read status or the quality of the tags, you can automatically on the fly write to this tag the IP address of the secondary PLC. And without creating scripts or, or additional tags or additional driver worksheets, uh, those tags will be automatically switched to the second PLC. Uh, very well, there is another question. What about tag count number while is not used? A very nice uh, uh, interface here, uh, uh, characteristic of this solution is that I created the tags A, B, and C. I use the tags A, B, and C in this spreadsheet, and I use the tags A, B, and C in the 
Modbus spreadsheet, and I could use the tags A, B, and C in 100 other driver worksheets. They still count as three tags, no matter how many times I use those three tags in different drivers. So it's not counting uh, each one of those tags for licensing purposes more than once. The tag A counts as one tag, and you can configure this tag in as many driver worksheets as you want. It still counts as one tag. And just a, a note, a tip about that. Uh, in large projects, it's very common that you create tags and then you decide to use different tag names. And at the end of the day, you end up with uh, tags here in the list uh, that you do not use anymore. Like, for instance, let's say uh, my tag. I didn't use this tag anywhere. So in Indosoft, we have here on the Home tab uh, the option Remove Unused Tags. And if you click here, it scans the whole application and shows you the list of tags that you have created but you are not using anywhere. We do not remove those tags right away because uh, Indosoft might have not found this tag because you are using it indirectly, like from a pointer. But if, it, if you recognize that you are not using this tag uh, anymore, in fact, you can click here Remove and Indosoft will automatically remove this tag from the tags database. Not only this tag, but any other unused tags uh, that are still checked in that list. So it's a nice tool to clean your project and make sure that you are not wasting tags that are not being used, actually used in the application. Very well. Any other questions? There is a question if there is a way to visualize tag values in an iPhone or iPad. Yes, uh, Indosoft Web Studio has a solution called SMA, Studio Mobile Access. Uh, so on the server, you just have to install the Microsoft IIS, the web server from Microsoft and in the software studio. And then you come here to graphics, thin clients, and select mobile access. In this interface, you can define areas and sub areas in a hierarchical view. Uh, so right here, you can right click and insert an area, like for instance, uh, oil. And here in oil, I can create sub areas like tank one and back to oil, tank two. So you define your, sorry, tank two. So you define your hierarchy. And for each one of those areas, you can define alarm groups whose alarms should be displayed on that area and tags that should be uh, displayed in that area. You can assign a label different from the tag name, like for instance, tank level. And if you want to display this value in a widget, you can define the type of widget that you want to use to display the value. Uh, you can define if you want to display this value in a trained control and what's the color of the pen. And you can also disable if the user should be able to write this value uh, from the browser back to the server. The beauty of this solution is that, number one, it's very simple to configure. You pretty much fill this table with the tags that you want to display. And you can visualize those values from any device with a web browser that supports HTML5. Could be Windows, but could also be an iPhone, an iPad, uh, an Android tablet, an Android phone, a BlackBerry with a browser that supports HTML5 could be pretty much any platform. So uh, in the Indosoft website, if we go to indosoft.com, we have here in products and downloads, you can go to demos, and you have the option mobile access demo. We have Indosoft actually running on the cloud, and from that application, uh, I can click here view demo, 
it asks for username and password, guest and Indosoft. In this case, the server is running on the on the cloud, but doesn't have to be. The any Indosoft application with Microsoft IIS can be the server. And I have my areas here, my sub areas, and I can navigate back and forth. And for each area, I can see the alarms assigned for that area. You can even acknowledge alarms and write comments, and this information will be uh, updated on the server. You can go to process values and see all the tags that you assigned for that area with the respective widgets. And if the background color for the widget is this light blue, it indicates you can click on it and change the set point, change the value, write the value back to the server, and everything is updated automatically. <clears throat> and in trains, <clears throat> you can visualize all the pins that you assigned for that particular uh, area. And you can show or hide the legend on the fly. Uh, you have many different configurations, like if you want to uh, fill the area below the pins, or if you want to see history data, if you want to see the cursor data, it's all configurable on the fly and works on pretty much any platform, any browser from any platform that supports ADTML5. Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, uh, Opera, different browsers, uh, any browser that supports ADTML5, not necessarily a Windows platform. Another question is, uh, can you please show some example uh, which use COM wrapper which get PLC data in display Indosoft? How does the tag uh, value get refreshed automatically? Uh, not sure what you mean with the COM wrapper but um, th there are different ways to read data from the PLC and bring the data to the tags. So the most typical one would be a communication driver. So we have more than 240, more than 250 by this time drivers available to different protocols. Uh, and if your PLC does not support one of the drivers that Indosoft uh, provides, uh, and by the way, you can see the list from the Indosoft uh, products. Or you can also come here to products uh, and downloads, and you have uh, drivers. You can click here, and you can see the list of all drivers for Indosoft and filter by manufacturer, by protocol, by many different means. And there are hundreds and hundreds of drivers here. Anyway. If Indosoft does not have a driver for your protocol, you have different options. One option would be for you to create a new driver for Indosoft, and we sell a toolkit, a API that you can purchase. And using this API, you can generate a new DOL, if you know the, the, the protocol from the PLC, copy this DOL to your installation, and add your own driver to Indosoft Web Studio. And then you can use this driver interface, and the worksheets will be uh, available for your driver automatically. And you can link tags to addresses in the PLC using the standard driver interface. Other alternative would be uh, to communicate with your PLC through a third-party OPC server. And here in communication, Indosoft offers the OPC DA, XML, UA, and .NET clients. So we can communicate with uh, PLCs through third-party OPC servers uh, using different OPC specifications, DA, XML, .NET, or UA. And more specifically for your question, uh, you're talking about a COM wrapper. And if your COM wrapper is uh, uh, more than a COM wrapper, but also a ActiveX control. So all the all ActiveX control is a COM control, not all COM 
uh, servers is an ActiveX control, but if, if in your case uh, it is an ActiveX control, you can drop it on the screen, and if you have properties here to read or to write or uh, methods to read or write, you can call them by uh, using tags here to trigger the commands or under the properties. Uh, you can define here if you want to scan them uh, continuously. If you define a, a tag here, and you can change the scan to always or not. Or you can use here VB script, give a name to the uh, ActiveX control that you developed or someone else developed, and use here the syntax to see access properties or uh, methods from your ActiveX control. If your ActiveX control generates an event whenever there is a new value, you can go to configuration, events, and capture whatever events your ActiveX control uh, generates. And here, link tags using dollar sign like tag A equal to whatever value is returned by your event. At le uh, finally, if you, are, uh, if you have a COM server and you want to read values from this COM server and this COM server is not an ActiveX control and you do not want to create a driver to read data from this control, you can use VBScript for that. So in VBScript, you can create an object, let's call X, and you can set this object X using the syntax create object with the name of your COM server. Let's say A, B, C, D, E, whatever is the name of your COM server. And then you can use here uh, the object X dot in properties from your COM server. Let's say you have a property called uh, address 1, and you want to set the tag A with uh, the value from this address 1. So you could do something like this. You can do that in any VB script interface from Windows Soft Web Studio. Uh, if you do from a button on the screen, it will be executed only when someone clicks on the button. If you do this, for instance, under tasks in script, it will do whenever this script uh, worksheet is executed. So if you write one, we are continuously uh, executing this, uh, this command, and in this case, it would make more sense to create the control once here in the startup script, and then in another script, you just call uh, or access the property address one from this object and write the value into the tag A. So there are many different ways. The architecture is completely open. You can use the driver toolkit to create new drivers, you can use OPC servers, if available, and uh, use the OPC client in Indosoft. You can use ActiveX controls, even .NET controls, or DB script to access your COM server directly. Very well, uh, one more question here. Is it possible to manage a template for historical reports for HCCP requirements? Uh, something like the graph tab, but uh, built in Indosoft. Uh, search should be from proprietary files, much better uh, with simple Windows C application. Uh, yeah, you can create uh, templates and, and uh, reports and, and so on and so forth. It really depends on the format of your reports. But for instance, if you want uh, to create a report with this graphical trend control, uh, if you double click on the trend control and you go under advanced, uh, we have here this option export to file. And we support different formats here. Uh, BNP, GIF, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. For Windows C, we support BNP and uh, JPEG. So you select uh, format here. You define the name of the report file in this field, and you can use a tag here between curly braces to make this name variable. And whenever, and you configure another tag in the trigger field, 
whenever the tag in the trigger field changes of value, Indosoft dumps the image of the trend control into this report file uh, with this format. And you can also define the size of this report. So this would be a, a easy way, a built-in way uh, to drop information from the trend control, even in the graphical format, into a uh, non-readable, uh, at least non-editable non uh, uh, format, like a JPEG, a PNG, a bitmap. Uh, back to the question about the comb wrapper, which options have a better performance? Undoubtedly, the native communication driver is, the, uh, is conceptually the solution that will provide you the best performance. Uh, the, the, the product was designed to handle communications through the drivers. The drivers uh, run in an independent thread from the scripts, from the viewer, from everything else. Uh, so if your device takes a long time to respond, uh, you, do not, you are not decreasing the performance of the other tasks. There are many built-in tools to manage the communication through the drivers. So uh, if you are willing to create a new driver for the, the protocol, uh, I would recommend to create a new native driver to uh, talk to your device. If, by the way, if the protocol is extremely simple, like a simple ASCII protocol, we have a built-in native driver called TXRX, which can be used to send uh, commands uh, through serial or TCP IP interfaces to send messages in an ASCII format and also to receive uh, information uh, through a simple ASCII protocol. But uh, if your device supports a more complex protocol, requires handshaking, uh, checksum, these kind of things, uh, then I would recommend to create a new native communication driver, which you can develop by yourself using the Indosoft Driver Toolkit, or you can provide us uh, with the protocol documentation, and we can uh, provide you with a quote uh, to develop a driver uh, for you uh, according to the protocol documentation. Very well. <clears throat> uh, another question is, how can I improve graphic on the remote desktop connection because it doesn't look like an original in the project? Uh, or thin client. I've tested on Windows 2003 server, and it look it doesn't look uh, as good as in the server. Uh, if you can use a thin client solution, web thin client or secure view thin client, then it's gonna look as good as the original application. Uh, if you want to display the, the complete graphical information today in a device that does not support, uh, uh, that's not Windows, then uh, remote, like an iPad, an iPhone, and so on, but you want to display the complete graphical interface with all the objects, all the animations today, you can do that. You can display in the soft application in an iPad, in an iPhone, in an Android device, but you have to use on those devices a remote desktop connection uh, to a Windows uh, PC where you are running the server or a secure viewer thin client uh, solution. Uh, when you use a remote desktop connection, uh, the remote desktop uh, provides options for you to uh, reduce uh, the quality of the images uh, to, to increase the performance based on the bandwidth on, on your network. Based on my personal test, uh, using the settings from uh, Windows 2008 R2 on the server, I got a much better uh, graphical resolution than with Windows 2003 server. Uh, and the tests that we conducted were with, uh, on the iPad and Android devices uh, using a remote desktop uh, applications that are free of charge 
and uh, we have in one of our blogs uh, we described which ones we used. So if I come here to corporate blog, if I look for cloud, for example, collaboration, soft this. Let's look for iPad. Expo it's probably older than that. I will have to to find the link and send to you the link for the ah there we go oh this, this is just a, a, a news about a demonstration live demonstration in a train show, so I can find here the uh, blog where we made public the, the apps that we used, but if you even Google for that, like uh, remote desktop for iOS, light RDP, that's the one we used. Yeah, that's the one we used for the iOS. And if you Google for uh, remote desktop application for Google. You for Android, you find the other one we tested on Android. So uh, th th this is uh, still a little bit confidential, but uh, Indosoft is about to release a new version in, in one or two months, uh, actually a service pack, and you will be able to design screens in the software of Studio, shapes and animations, uh, and you'll be able to visualize those screens on any device with a browser that supports ADTML5. And obviously, it will look much, much better than a remote desktop connection, and it will be much lighter, and will run natively on the browsers from iOS, from Android, and from Windows as well. It will still have some limitations uh, for data objects and scripts, uh, but the shapes and the basic animations will be readily available there. So it, it may be a valid option for your application uh, using a service pack 2 that will be available in one or two months. And other questions? Uh, th there is a question here. Uh, some applications like system fault detection and isolation FDI or advanced control systems uh, require complex programming tools, machine learning, uh, complex equations solving, etc. Solutions uh, can be find, found in advanced computing software like Mat uh, MATLAB, Simulink. Uh, but in the soft, you would have to do that through scripts. Uh, I would like to know if uh, what is done for this problem, uh, are other improvements done? Uh, in the software studio is primarily a HMI SCADA package, so uh, our goal, our main goal, I would say, is to provide the platform, the structure, the, the, uh, the main development environment where you can design your applications around it, and it's generic enough to be used in many different vertical markets. Uh, tools like MATLAB, they are specific, uh, specifically designed for some uh, calculations, for some graphical calculations. So uh, it, it is a focus uh, a little bit different from the focus on this product. However, as you pointed in your uh, in, in your post here, you could write, uh, uh, see if you know the equations and everything else, uh, you could write them in VBScript, and if they are too complex for VBScript, you could even write in any other language, in any other module, and link it to Indosoft using an API called Tags Database Toolkit, 
or even using the COM server interface that we described before. And, uh, or another way to do that is to use Indosoft in conjunction with a software that was specifically designed for the particular calculations that you want to use. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have customers using uh, uh, MATLAB, and there are OPC interfaces for MATLAB, so you could use Indosoft to read the data from the fields, controllers, from the PLCs, and then push this data to MATLAB using uh, OPC, and receive the results back from MATLAB and show on the screen on the thin clients or store in the database. Very well. So we have one more question or very well. So no more questions at this point. Uh, I would like to just uh, point a few uh, information, additional information for you. If you go to Indosoft.com, under uh, uh, you can go in, in many different places, but here in support, video library, webinars. Uh, this webinar will be soon posted in, in this list, and we are hosting webinars uh, every two weeks, uh, or at least twice a month, uh, and we post them here. So uh, it would be nice to check from time to time to see if we are hosting a webinar uh, from a subject that is of your interest. Uh, and also, if you come here to uh, online training videos, Indosoft has posted free of charge the complete training for Indosoft Web Studio in uh, video here. So you can access each one of the modules individually and uh, click here and either download or watch the video on your computer. Uh, so the complete training for Indosoft Web Studio is ava available uh, in modules from the website. Finally, I would like just to provide some additional contact information for Indosoft. If you have further questions in the future, please feel free to contact us. And I would like to uh, thank each and every one of you for taking the time for this webinar. I hope it was uh, useful for you, and I uh, hope to see to see you again soon in the next webinar. Thank you, everybody, and have a great evening. Bye-bye.